so this topic is on uh, uh, techniques for isolation of a plant active ingredients and their identification so mostly uh, i'll cover uh, all the basics uh, related to this science it may take about a uh, hour uh, to complete everything but i wish uh, i'll cover almost every aspect of uh, this phytochemical uh, research e- even if you will not be able to do all up to this level at least you will have a knowledge on these aspects so that when you plan any research in your future or when you plan a career in future you will have a idea about what is phytochemistry is about and basically i am also a botanist so uh, you don't expect that this ppt will be of too much of chemical but i will just explain superficially almost every aspect of uh, phytochemistry at uh, starting from the basics to the advanced uh, identification of molecules using spectroscopy so in 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 uh, uh, the the presentation I have divided into four parts there will be a, a introduction on what uh, these uh, phytochemicals are and there will be another part on how we can uh, extract the phytochemicals and the third part will deal with the isolation and identification and then i will give a brief story of how a phytochemical study has won a nobel prize for medicine so that in most almost all presentations uh, i give this inspiring story so that uh, a, a a person uh, looking a research in phytochemistry will also aspire for such a great contribution in future so uh, what are uh, active ingredients or phytochemicals what are the uh, types Wh- why should we isolate them what methods can be used for extraction what methods can be used for isolation and how do we identify them that is the um, main purpose of this presentation so what are active principle active principles of a plant a plant chemical which is present in a plant material which will give some pharmacological action is called as a active principle so it can be a any type of chemical molecule it can be an alkaloid it can be a steroid it can be a glycoside it can be any type of uh, plant molecule but if it pr- produces a marked pharmacological activity on a living being then it is called as active principle the principle will act on the pharmacological effect physiological effect of a body and bring about some changes in the body that is therapeutic in nature so we use it for medicinal purposes so uh, an active principle can also cause some toxicity sometimes just like any other allopathic drug we should not be under the impression that uh, as a chemical is derived from plant it is safe and it doesn't have any side effect it's not that it's not the case most many of the phytochemicals will also exert side side effects so active principles are nothing but a principal compound in the in a, in a in a plant which is active which produces some pharmacological action so every plant will contain a major active principle and there will be more than one chemicals which are pharmacologically active so it it's not that one plant means one active constituent there are several active constituents in a plant sometimes it may be one it sometimes it can be more than one so when we consider a plant it is not a single molecule if you extract a plant uh, extract a, a fraction from a plant material it will contain several molecules each molecule will have different actions so these activities of a plant will differ so every 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 molecule will have different kind of actions so also there will be uh, less side effects when there are so many constituents working in a extract on a body synergistically so th- that is also an important science called synergism where uh, so where so many compounds as mixture acts on body 
and it doesn't exert so much of side effects one the side effect of one molecule is nullified by another molecule that is called as synergism so why do we want to isolate them as a extract as such or if you take a plant powder we call as example churnum we can take churnum as such so lot of molecules together will go to our body and synergistically it will bring about some changes but what happens when a plant molecule is extracted at very low low dose level the a molecule will give some pharmacological action but along with that it will also give some side effect when an extract is i mean a isolated compound is given to a living body so isolation is uh, sometimes suggested sometimes the whole extract is best so when we consider synergistic effect whole extract whole plant powder is the best or if you are interested in isolating a particular compound and developing it as a drug in that case isolation comes in picture and when before going for isolation of a molecule we should go for extracting it the active fraction from a total extract should be extracted the portion should be extracted using different solvents and then it should be each our compound of interest must be isolated from it so the extraction methods i will uh, uh, tell you one by one then once we extract we isolate a molecule from that the molecule of our interest and the isolated compound is identified that is called as structural elucidation that is for identification of the molecule so the the, the presentation will cover almost all these aspects of phytochemistry so here i have given some examples uh, of plants and their active principles so that you will have just an idea about phytochemicals uh, i mean active ingredients present in medicinal, plant, medicinal plants so here i i don't want to read out everything like just for example i'll tell some like in acalifa indica acalifin is act active principle in aconitum species aconitin and pseudaconitin are molecules of interest uh, acoros acoros calamus that is yamb it has acerone as a active principle aratoda vasica that is aratoda that will have uh, the vasicin as a active principle and aloe vera will have aloe in imodin chrysophenol so so and so on. so there will be uh, active molecule in every plant when we when we take a plant as such in the form of powder or kashayam or any other form of medicine some one of these ingredients will enter our body and that will cause some marked physiological action on our body so these active principles are important along with these active principles there will be several molecules we generally think one plant is one active molecule it's not like that so at least 5 to 10 major constituents are there in some comp some plants along with that hundreds of minor uh, minor uh, chemical constituents are also seen in a plant so when we take a example of some uh, uh, drugs containing volatile oil those uh, molec those uh, drugs will have hundreds of compounds together in that in some cases it may be limited to 5 to 10 in some cases it will go beyond 100 so out of them we don't call all of them as active principle some of them will be active and the some of them will not be giving any action but it is said that as per uh, as per the principle of synergism that some of the compounds uh, will help in avoiding the side effects by these high concentration molecules that they are called as active principle so uh, here i have just given a list of so much of uh, plants and their active molecules curcumin curcuma longa iosiamin atropin embelin gardenin glycerin glyceric acid all these are very important uh, uh, active principles some of them are even available as uh, allopathic drugs many of them are even available as allopathic drugs as isol as isolated compounds 
so when you take a, a isolated compound as a drug you should be always careful because there will be side effects just like allopathic drug but when we are taking a whole plant powder or whole plant extract in the form of kashayam maso maristam then there will not be that much of uh, side effects so uh, that principle you must keep in mind so uh, again i have given some more examples of active principles from uh, very well known plants piperin is a very common uh, in, uh, active principle in many of piper species then the therapeutic applications so i said every molecule uh, from the plant has a marked biological activity so here i have given some list of molecules which the biological activity of uh, some molecules which are derived from plants so just for example i'll uh, give example of some some alisa in is anti tubercular anti microbial so if you see the therapeutic effects there are several effects uh, given by these molecules there are anti cancerous molecules there are hypolipidemic uh, molecules there are cardiac stimulants there are anti malarials there are wound healing molecules there are insect antifeedants there are molecules which improves memory in uh, human being there are anti asthmatic drugs there are drugs which which are anti inflammatory in nature anti ulcer in nature so if you see these examples you will come to know that so much of uh, medicinal activities pharmacological actions are exerted by active principles present from plants so these properties have been uh, thoroughly studied once the, uh, we deal up to this presentation will go up to identification of the plant compound active molecule after that uh, when the molecule is identified pharmacologists will go for screening of these molecules for their pharmacological actions they will first uh, see the uh, toxicity nature of the drug they will do uh, evaluations like uh, acute toxicity then chronic toxicity then they will find out the dose of that molecule at what dose uh, the molecule doesn't exert any uh, uh, toxic effect then they'll take uh, some one tenth one fifth of that dose and study its pharmacological action on particular activity which is already claimed by claimed for that particular medicinal plant so based on those studies these uh, outputs are available these uh, molecules are uh, therapeutically important and it exerts so many wide array of pharmacological actions so from that we can understand that how important are medicinal plants and their isolated molecules and here some more examples uh, like rutin silimarin taxol which is a very important uh, anti cancer molecule Uh, tonacillin vicolides vinblastin vincrestin which you may have heard of uh, anti cancer drug from inca russia then vitexin vidafrin a very important immunomodulant uh, uh, anti arthritic anti cancer nowadays you may have heard for when covid also this is a drug suggested so that you will keep your immune system fit so that virus can will not affect you so these vedafrin and vitanolides are also important these molecules come from uh, vidania somnifera as active molecule so just i have given some examples of active molecules as well as their pharmacological action so that you will know how important is isolation of active molecules so most of the studies uh, what we do we uh, just end up uh, finding the pharmacological action of uh, total extract and then we leave at that stage then actually we should go for isolation of molecules from them and we should see the activity of those uh, isolates that is called as activity guided uh, isolation based on the activity we go for isolation and find out which molecule in that particular extract is therapeutically active or pharmacologically active and then we uh, develop a drug from that so these are the drugs which have been already well established Uh, and has been in use uh, for uh, pharma uh, different uh, actions as drugs in the market then i'll go for uh, now I'll, i'll i'll show you how uh, we should extract uh, uh, plant material so extraction means separation of a fraction or a molecule from inactive constituent when we a plant when we consider a plant powder it is a mixture of active and in inactive portions 
So active portion means the secondary metabolites present in the plant. And the inactive portion means the fiber, cellulose, uh, lignin, all these materials which forms the structure of the plant. These uh, secondary metabolites are the contents which are present in the cell, in, inside the cell. And the cell structure, or the, or the, the, or the part of chemicals which form the cell structure like cell wall, etc., they are inactive. They Mostly they will not have any pharmacological action. But uh, there are studies on uh, these also, which will have which have shown some pharmacological action. So when we think of extraction, we are separating the pharmacologically active portion of a plant from inactive fractions, inactive portion of the plant material. When we consider, when we take 100 gram of a plant powder, so some 20, 30 percent will be secondary metabolites in that. The, the rest, 70 percent, are just fibers cellulose, lignin, all those materials which forms the structure of the plant. So when we go for extraction, we separate these active portion from the plant. So depending upon the nature of the chemicals which we, we are uh, trying to extract, we should use different techniques for extraction. So it will differ based on what is the molecule of or what is the fraction of your interest. So accordingly, you should decide what extract you should go for. Generally, we, we will simply say water extract, ethanol extract, but what is the funda behind uh, selecting those extracts? That should be clear. So only then you will be ending up with the right extract for your study. So that uh, uh, choosing a solvent for getting a better, the desired extract is, a, is, is the exact technique needed in the case of extraction. Uh, extraction method is different. The extracting solvent, choosing an exact uh, uh, solvent for extraction is different. So you should you should make a right choice of extraction method as well as extracting solvent so that you will end up with the right kind of extract as per your need. So now let us see what are the extraction methods available. Uh, the, the term extraction is used in pharmaceuticals. It involves separation of medicinally active portion of the plant from the or animal tissues from the inactive or inert components. So I said the structural part of the plant are in a, in a inert. They will not have any action. But the secondary metabolites which is present will have some pharmacological active a, activity. So this separation of the medicinally active portion from the inactive portion of the plant material is called as extraction. So uh, generally we think that extraction is uh, uh, high of chemistry. Uh, it, 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 in, it requires a lot of knowledge in chemistry. It's not like that. We can, we, uh, in the successive slides I'll show, the extraction has been in use uh, by our ancestors since several years. And it, it's a simple job. You just need to have a right method and right uh, uh, solvent. You will end up uh, isolating a right molecule, extracting a right molecule. So the appropriate uh, extraction technology is important. The products so obtained are relatively impure. Don't think that what we get as extract is a pure molecule. It's relatively Im impure liquids. It is always impure. It is never pure. It is a mixture of several compounds. It will be, a, it can be in the form of a liquid. It can be a semi-solid or even it can be a powder. You can directly use it for uh, oral application. Uh, you can have it uh, directly internally, or you can use it for external applications. The product so obtained, what we call as extract. So the preliminary methods, the ancient methods of extraction are crude, but they are based on synergism. But the current extraction methods using organic solvents are a little bit, uh, uh, they, they, we will end up uh, getting a uh, pure molecules, mixture of pure molecules in that. The so old methods, when I say just preparation of tea decoction, but, uh, just by adding a plant powder into a hot water or keeping it in a cold water for one day or uh, taking a plant material, adding sugar, getting it fer fermented with the yeast and then getting a, a fermented uh, alcohol-based preparation from this. These are the old methods of extraction, but still they are in use. Uh, as per uh, Ayush medical systems in Ayurveda, Siddha, you know, any, and other methods of uh, systems of medicine also use these techniques because they are traditionally mentioned in the, our old texts, 
old uh, manuscripts mentioned these kind of extraction methods along with that we have evolved some recent methods of extraction that also i will uh, brief you how this can be i uh, extraction can be done so these many methods of extractions uh, are available uh, say it uh, maceration infusion digestion decoction hot continuous extraction supercritical fluid extraction sonication fermentation percolation so all these kind of methods of extraction are in practice so which method you will choose based on what is the compound of your interest what kind of molecule you want to extract based on that you will choose the right method for extraction so i'll explain each method uh, how it is done and how the one method is different from other and some of the advanced methods of extraction uh, are also covered uh, in the presentation so first let me tell you what is maceration for fluid extract so here in the case of maceration extract this is a me method we uh, generally follow during our extraction methods where we do doesn't have so much of facility we just do this method of extraction we store a plant we take a powder we fill it in a bottle add enough solvent keep it for keep it for around 24 hours as said and then we tilt the bottle and see what uh, and extra i mean separate what is the extracted material from that so whole or coarsely powdered plant drug is kept in contact with the solvent so solvent uh, differs what solvent you are going to use uh, that differs you may use ethanol you may use a very low polar solvent like hex hexane you may use ethanol or you may use water or you may use a mix of ethanol and water so that all depends on uh, what kind of compound is or is of your interest so it is kept in uh, with the solvent in a stoppered container for a defined period of time with the frequent agitation until soluble matter is dissolved so the mixture is strained by tilting the container the mark pressed and the combined liquid filtered this you, you can understand simply adding plant powder in bottle uh, adding solvent closing it keeping it for around 24 hours then tilting the bottle and removing the soluble portion that is called as maceration but digestion is exactly maceration but there we use gentle heat so in case of maceration we don't heat the uh, solvent in case of digestion we use hot solvent either we add a solvent in hot condition or we heat the container so that temperature of the uh, macerate is increased so that when temperature is in, uh, increase the solvent efficiency is increased but you should take care that the, uh, the the increase in temperature is not altering the chemistry of the pro, uh, chemical of your interest some of the compounds will uh, change its chemistry when you heat them so you should take care that in case of uh, digestion you are using heat so the compounds which are thermolabile should not be extracted using hot digestion so you got the uh, difference in maceration we just keep it uh, as such without giving heat in case of digestion we the method is same but we use heat again percolation is nothing but the pro, uh, in case of percolation uh, the method is just like maceration but we here we use a container called as percolator so it's a cone shaped structure wherein you will have a tap at the bottom of the container in case of maceration you are tilting the bottle but in case of percolator there will be a tap at the bottom of the uh, percolator after the defined period of time you just open the tap and collect the uh, uh, the dissolved matter allowed to drip by gravity by gravity you collect uh, the material from the bot uh, percolator so percolator is a narrow cone shaped vessel open at both ends is used the powder drug mass loosely packed in the percolator and covered solvent added to give shallow layer above the mass allowed to stand for 24 hours outlet of the percolator open and liquid allowed to drip by gravity mark is pressed to obtain the extract completely so the mark that is the plant powder inside the percolator is pressed so that total extract inside the uh, powder powder mass is uh, derived out of the 
plant powder mass otherwise uh, lot of if you add if you take 1 kg of plant powder you add 5 liter of solvent at least 2 to 3 liter of the solvent will be still inside the mark so you have to press it and you have to remove by pressure whatever solvent is, which is uh, which which is present inside these plant the plant powder that is called as mark so mark should be pressed to obtain the extract completely then that is concentrated filtered and concentration concentrated that how percolation works so in in case of uh, uh, maceration there is no use of temperature in digestion maceration it is nothing but maceration but it, there is use uh, temperature in case of percolation you do a maceration but uh, it's it's with the help of a percolator so it's 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 uh, drip of the uh, dissolved solvent is by gravity from the bottom using a tap so that is percolation then there is a method called as infusion so in case of infusion it is this is uh, simple you all know infusion when you take a plant powder add in water keep it for some time and then filter that is infusion so infusion is a dilute solution of the readily soluble constituent when you add some material to plant powder it gets dissolved immediately for example if you add something uh, like sugar to water it gets dissolved immediately right some compounds are not like that it doesn't dissolve uh, easily in uh, water so whichever is readily soluble that method of extraction is called as infusion fresh infusion is prepared by macerating the drug for a short period of time with the cold or hot boiling here in case of infusion the time you use for extraction is short you don't keep it for uh, 24 hours 48 hours like that here immediately maybe one hour 15 minutes you just keep just stir it keep there you in case of infusion you may either use cold solvent or hot solvent that depends on you so infusion is a ready extraction of readily soluble material but most of the cases when you go for extraction infusion will not yield you all the constituent present in the powder you may need heat or you may need uh, some other driving force to extract all the molecules from inside the plant cells then is decoction the powder drug is boiled in specified volume water for a defined time so here this is a method uh, which is traditionally used in ayurveda siddha etc they where you uh, specified volume of water is boiled with the specified quantity of drug for a long time and it is reduced and some concentrated extract is obtained so powder drug is boiled in specified volume of water for defined time cooled and strained for filtered or filter strained or filtered suitable for extracting water soluble heat stable constituents so whatever is soluble in uh, water and heat stable should be stable when you heat or reduce it for one fourth one sixteenth so many compounds will tend to lose its chemistry it will break if it is a glycoside it will break or uh, it, it will react with other constants present in the plant and it will be chemically different after you extract it so most widely used process of uh, for ayurveda and siddha drugs and is called as kwadam or kudinir in siddha in kwata in ayurveda and kudinir in siddha ratio of 1 is to 4 1 is to 16 which is brought down its original volume by boiling We'll add one 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 part of one one cup of powder, four cup of water. Then we reduce it to volume one, and then filter and use it as a extract. That is called as a decoction. So this method of uh, preparation of ext extract is generally used in preparation of kashayam. Usually, when we have plant powder, this is a method of extraction we use. But it is water based. This is a water based method of extraction. I uh, uh, hope you know that for every type of molecule, water base is not okay. Some some molecules, some chemical constants require other organic uh, solvents, uh, low polar or high polar organic solvents, uh, not like uh, not water for extraction, so that uh, you will get uh, uh, chemically unchanged uh, uh, compounds in it. So this is a decoction. Then. This method is called as hot continuous extraction, otherwise known as soxalate extraction. So this is a very common, uh, commonly used method of uh, extraction. Here, uh, this is uh, this is, uh, this takes very less time. Here we use uh, heat uh, to drive out the compounds from the molecule, 
and the plant material comes in contact with the fresh solvent every time in the methods which we have seen earlier what happens is once the compound is extracted to the solvent after the saturation of that particular uh, solvent there will not be further extraction so to avoid that disadvantage this oxalate apparatus has been uh, designed here what happens is every time uh, plant powder gets in touch with fresh solvent you can see the uh, the structure of this uh, apparatus where you can see that in the in the round bottom flask marked as f we add solvent there is a uh, apparatus attached on to this uh, round bottom flask in that there is a tube uh, inside called known as thimble it's a porous bag in that we keep plant powder in thimble and when the uh, round bottom flask is heated it forms vapors that vapors goes through the tube it goes up it it tries to escape through condenser but as there is a water circulation in the condenser those solvents get condensed and drops of those uh, solvent will fall to this thimble so the solvent which is falling to thimble t will be always uh, hot in uh, temperature so it will extract those material and when it is filled through siphoning tube uh the the, uh, the through siphoning of the uh, solvent the fresh solvent comes back to the round bottom flask uh, here uh, the uh, the tube side tube s the marked as side tube s is go, uh, is for uh, escaping of uh, uh, vapors and that goes to the condenser it uh, it it forms droplets falls to ba falls back and through the the left side you can see a small tube wherein the solvent comes back to the round bottom flask so this is a continuous method of extraction for about 3 hours 6 hours uh, you just extract the plant material you will get all the uh, molecules present in the extract uh, i mean the plant material extracted so only a disadvantage is here uh, we use heat so thermolabile uh, compounds cannot be extracted so the finely powdered crude drug held in a chamber inside a porous bag called a thimble extracting solvent in the flask is heated vapors condensed in a condenser condensed uh, solvent drips into thimble contained drug extracting it by contact by contact every time uh, the solvent which comes in contact with the plant powder in thimble will be fresh that means uh, it will not have uh, uh, the uh, con uh, chemi i mean phytochemical because it comes back the uh, extract in the uh, flask round bottom flask will keep on getting concentrated in each cycle of this uh, siphoning so as the le level of the liquid uh, t rises to the top siphon tube uh, siphon tube is actually not s to the left side you can see a small tube that is the siphon tube the liquid contains uh, t siphon back to the flask the process is uh, continued until uh, you have to take a drop of uh, the solvent after around 3 to 6 hours a drop you should take and the drop of solvent from the siphon tube when evaporated does not leave a residue so if you don't get any residue from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the solvent which comes out through the siphon tube then the extraction is complete that method of extraction is called as hot continuous extraction this is very popular this uh, any large scale small scale any kind of extraction is possible using this technique the advantage of this technique is uh, uh, it's a large amount of drug can be extracted with the much, much smaller quantity of solvent tremendous economy in terms of time energy small scale can also be obtained continuous extraction procedure in large scale is also possible so that uh, tons of materials can be extracted easily then aqueous al alcoholic extraction by fermentation this method i have already told like in uh, in ayurveda there is a method called as asavam and aristam this method of preparation is a traditional method of preparation it is also used currently for extraction most of the ayurveda industries where they market asavam and aristam this method is followed here soaking of the drug either in powder form or dried aqueous extract for defined period of time 
it takes around 30 days sometimes 60 days it depends on uh, type of uh, asavam type of drug you use so during which it undergoes fermentation when you when you keep it in a closed container for long time the mixture get uh, fermented generating alcohol in situ you usually uh, along with the drugs they add uh, some uh, sweetening agent usually it will be honey or it will be jaggery uh, and also some uh, fermenting agents some flowers of uh, maduka latifolia then woodfordia fruticosa which has a lot of uh, 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 yeast inside it so that those drugs are added along with the sugar drugs and all that together and kept closed for 30 60 days so the sugar present in the mixture uh, will turn into alcohol and that the generation of alcohol is in situ thus facilitating the extraction of active function the alcohol which is produced inside will extract the uh, phytochemical present in the drug so alcohol thus generated which all will also serve as preservative so it will not uh, have any fungal infection etc then uh, fermentation done usually done in earthen vessels or porcelain jars or steel tanks the process is employed in Ayurveda for producing classical preparations like asam and arishtam. In case of preparation of asam arishtam, this is a method, aqueous alcoholic extraction by the principle of fermentation. So here fermentation is the basic principle. The alcohol is generated in situ. The generated alcohol extracts the phytochemical. We, gen we add, uh, otherwise in the chemical method of extraction, we add ethanol. But here in situ generated ethanol is used in extraction. So there is another technique called as ultrasound extraction. It is called sonication. Here ultrasound with high energy from 20 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz increase the permeability of the cell wall. What happens is when uh, this, this uh, ultrasound frequency is bombarded on the plant, uh, plant powder along with the solvent, the permeability of the solvent to cell inside the cell and extraction of those molecules from inside the cell goes easy so that extraction time can be saved here powder drug is sonicated with an appropriate solvent to extract out solvent soluble components so usually in the case of ralphia serpentina this is a method used so but the disadvantage is uh, deleterious effect of ultrasound energy more than 20000 hertz on the active constants of the medicinal plant because of the formation of free radicals so there is a formation of free radicals at this high energy that free radical will also enter to the extract then subsequently it will also interact uh, enter to the drug or the molecule which we isolate so this is a disadvantage otherwise uh, sonication if you want to extract some material immediately in within five minutes uh, you can do using a sonicator then supercritical fluid extraction this method is an industrial process of extraction of mostly used for extraction of uh, uh, volatile oil compounds the critical point of a pure substance is defined as the highest pressure and temperature at which it exists in vapor liquid equilibrium at this high temperature and pressure a uh, chemical uh, enters vapor liquid equilibrium at pressure and temperature above this point, single homogeneous fluid is formed, is said to be supercritical. So beyond this temperature, there is a single homogeneous fluid formed that is called as a supercritical uh, point of a uh, solvent. Here in this case, uh, carbon dioxide is uh, uh, very efficiently used. It is called a supercritical uh, carbon dioxide. A substance in supercritical phase is uh, neither a true liquid nor a true gas and has property of each so we have advantage of uh, uh, doing doing this just we have to give high pressure and high temperature uh, so in for carbon dioxide uh, it is 73.8 bar or atmospheric pressure and temperature of 31.2 degree so just by vary, varying this temperature and the pressure you can also change the polarity of the solvent of your interest. So once uh, extraction is over, when you bring that uh, mixture to a normal temperature, carbon dioxide just escapes like a gas. Then you will have only that extract in your hand. So this is a very good method, industrial method of extraction. Most of organic, I mean, uh, volatile compounds are extracted using supercritical fluid extraction method. Then there is another method called uh, uh, for uh, extraction of essential oil. It is called as hydrodistillation. 
so boiling suspension of an aromatic plant material kept in water so that its vapors can be condensed so the oil which is immiscible with water is then separated so this this practically you can also do what happens is when you take uh, plant, plant powder with a lot of volatile oil uh, let me give you an example of clove uh, if you take a clove in water and if you boil it then you can see that drops of oil floating on the surface of water so that is called hydro distillation where you distill uh, a mixture of water along with the volatile oil containing drug the volatile oil as it is low uh, boils at very low temperature when it boils it escapes from that mixture so the plant material always remain in direct contact with the water on you have to take a mixture of water as well as the drug with the volatile oil for this method of extraction but water present in the still must always be more than enough so that uh, you should be avoiding material of over overheating and charring so in case you leave with less of water and only plant material you will be end up uh, ending up with the charring you will get uh, some bad aroma for char charring of the molecule so you should add enough water so that only volatile oil constituents are separated but while coming out from the uh, distillation unit it will be mixture of water as well as volatile oil so that is a disadvantage you will not get uh, pure volatile oil here it will be mixture of water as well as volatile oil here uh, volatile oil in the case of volatile oil uh, some of the volatile oils are uh, soluble in water so if water if some uh, some percentage for example it is said that about 5 to 10% of volatile oil will get dissolved in water so though that portion which is dissolved in water will go waste for us so that is the disadvantage of this method otherwise this is a very simple and easy method of extraction of volatile oil from a drug containing lot of uh, it suits for uh, material which contains lot of uh, volatile not for the compound plants which have as very less percentage of volatile oil uh, advantage is it is easiest uh, the cost of like, process equipment is very low design of the steel condenser collection flask are simple so it is suitable for field operation also so you if 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 acres of uh, uh, land is used for uh, cultivation of some volatile oil containing material in the field also this operation can be done but the disadvantage is it is complete extraction is not possible esters are partly hydrolyzed when heating is done most of the plant uh, volatile oil compound the aroma is due to the esters present in them so the esters partly get hydrolyzed and you will not get the exact aroma if you if you crush a plant uh, such a leaf you will get good aroma but after uh, hydro distillation the aroma will go away it will be different because there will be hydrolyzation of uh, esters then the sensitive substance like aldehydes also will polymerize so the smell aroma of the chemical i mean volatile oil extracted by this method will change and it requires more stills and space so it consumes sort of space high boiling some uh, somewhat water soluble oil constant cannot be completely vaporized so you will not be able to vaporize completely so when taking a volatile oil as example it contains hundreds of molecules so the uh, melting point i mean uh, melting point of each molecule will be different some will uh, evaporate at uh, uh, 25 degrees some will evaporate at 100 degree some will evaporate at 200 degree so if if the if the temperature of uh, evaporation is more than 100 then uh, you will not be able to uh, uh, drive out that molecule from water so this process is little bit un uneconomical you will have more loss in this method of uh, uh, hydro distillation method of preparation of volatile oils then uh, this is a traditional uh, method of uh, hydro distillation um i think uh, uh, people may be knowing this uh, method of extraction this is uh, this is uh, uh, used uh, for preparation of alcohol illegal preparation of alcohol where uh, a uh, uh, earthen madka is used uh, where uh, then it is tried then there is a bamboo pipe connecting and it is collected in a condenser uh, kept in water so this is a raw method of uh, hydro distillation so this same method can also be used for extraction of some volatile constituents 
so uh, a, a modern form of it is called as clavenger's hydrodistillation apparatus in case you want to estimate uh, quantity of volatile oil present in a plant material you can choose uh, this uh, apparatus so in some of the drugs uh, for elk uh, or sometime in case of uh, grambu you want to estimate how much oil is present so by using a distillation called as clavenger hydro distillation apparatus you can uh, quantify uh, quantify the amount of volatile oil present the first one a is for uh, light type volatile oil where volatile oil will float on water the b type uh, clavenger apparatus is for uh, mm, case of volatile oil which will sink in the water, uh, in in water that is a specific gravity higher than 1 volatile oil will specific gravity higher than 1 will sink in water you can see that in in the tube uh, with the tap there is a blue and uh, pink mark the pink mark is uh, oil so if if the oil is heavy it will sink in water but if the light weight uh, volatile oil will be floating on surface of water so these two different methods uh, types of clavenger apparatus is available for finding out uh, uh, met, i mean uh, constant i mean uh, quantity of volatile oil present in uh, herbal drugs so this is another method called cohobation i said uh, in case of hydro distillation the water which comes out will have some percentage of volatile oil dissolved in it that you can't separate you have to throw it so in case of cohobation that water is fed back again to the distillation apparatus and that oil which is dissolved in water is also recovered so that is called as cohobation it's a methodology to reduce loss of partly water soluble oil by redistillation so after distillation the the water is again redistilled so that whatever dissolved in that water will be uh, obtained back so distilled water containing the soluble part of essential oil is separated from the upper oil layer by decantation and is fed back into distillation still so this method is uh, highly useful in case of rose oil extraction rose oil is a very uh, commercially very important oil you all know many of us use uh, this rose water so rose water is from uh, rose petals so rose oil is soluble in water that's why you get uh, rose water uh, so to some extent and therefore a process of cohobation is adopted for maximization of rose oil yield so this is just for just nothing but hydro distillation but uh, the, the the oil which gets dissolved in the water is fed back to the distillery and uh, it, uh, some portion of that is uh, uh recovered back so that there will not be much loss then there is another method called as steam distillation here uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, a plant material is passed through steam at 100 degree celsius so there will not there will not be overheating of the mixture so in case of hydro distillation you have seen that you will be heating uh, everything water and uh, plant powder together so there will be boiling there will be chance of increase of temperature but in case of uh, in case of hydro distillation what happens is uh, i mean in case of steam distillation what happens is we use a current of steam which is separate uh, which is generated outside the still we have will have a separate uh, steam distillation uh, steam unit from there steam is passed through the volatile oil containing drug so that hot steam will drive out volatile oil from the mixture so the plant material is supported on a grid and saturated steam generated outside in a boiler is injected through the charge by means of open or perforated inlet kept below the grid so since the steam is generated in a satellite boiler the heat contact of the plant material will not be higher than 100 degrees celsius that is the advantage here and thus does not cause thermal degradation of the molecule so hope you got the difference of steam distillation and hydro distillation so advantage of steam distillation is steam can be readily controlled you can control how much steam you want but in heating you can't do that no thermal decomposition of oil constant most widely accepted process for large scale oil production so superior to other two process of distillation so drawback is much higher capital expenditure needed to build such a facility that is only the disadvantage and this method is called as ecule again this is for uh, extraction of volatile oil containing drug but this is for the extraction of volatile oil from citrus fruits used for the extraction of citrus oils where oils cells in 
ring are ruptured mechanically using a pointed projections so it, uh, the ring uh, goes into a machine where there will be small prickles so that will puncture all the surface uh, volatile oil glands and that liquid comes out you you all know that in the orange peel we just play just pressing the peel so oil sprays out of the peel so it contains very high concentration of oil in the peel the, the glands which are present in the oil, uh, peel of these uh, citrus fruits and that can be collected e easily by puncturing them so when you puncture the oil comes out of the uh, rind and that is collected mechanically so that is the method of uh, extraction uh, in case of volatile oil there is one more last method called as enfleurage so this what happens in some of the more, uh, drugs for example jasmine jasmine flower from flower bud to uh, flower opening it takes long time so in the long run it will emit those phytochemical i mean the odorous molecules slowly it will take time from bud to full opening it may take uh, some uh, 18 hours 20 hours 24 hours so slowly it is emitting the aromatic uh, chemical so what we want is some uh, fatty material which or wax wax or fat which will uh, extract these slowly uh, emitted uh, odorous molecule from these uh material example jasmine for jasmine it is uh, jasmine extract uh, jasmine oil extract this method is used so certain flowers uh, like jasmine continue the physiological activity of developing and giving off perfume even after picking so it slowly emits it's not that uh, when picking uh, all full volatile oil is present in it so fat possesses a high power of absorption and if brought in contact with the fragrant flowers readily absorbs the perfume emitted so that is a method you can see that just flower is spread on the surface of the wax in a in a tray it is uh, spread on that for a long time and after that after the every uh, volatile oil emitted from the flower is absorbed by the uh, wax that flower is removed and that wax is dissolved in ethanol only uh, volatile oil will get dissolved in ethanol but wax will not get dissolved in ethanol so the, in ethanol you will get concentrated uh, jasmine oil if you use this method that is called as enfleurage then i said uh, so these are all the methods of extraction which uh, I, I have explained all the methods of extraction then i was saying that uh, right choice of solvent is always important in getting uh, right kind of extract so polarity of solvent for extraction is very very important in getting the right kind of uh, extract uh, if you want the right choice of solvent is important successful extraction of a particular phytochemical so only when you use a right solvent you'll end up getting a right uh, uh, kind of extract or a molecule for extraction of low polar molecule a low polar solvent must be used and vice versa so depending upon the nature of the compound that is polarity of the compound you should choose which solvent is suitable for extracting that particular material so for a low polar solvent for extraction of low polar molecule you should use low polar um, solvent if you use a high polar solvent it will not dissolve and for extraction of high polar solvent uh, molecule you should use high polar solvent it will not dissolve in low polar solvent so based on if if you are looking for uh, just for an example i am saying if you are uh, looking for extraction of oil from a seed so you have a seed in your hand uh, let me tell you example of uh, a sesame seed it has oil you want to extract that oil uh, using some solvent if you use water it is a high polar solvent if you use ethanol again it is high polar solvent it will not get extract uh, the oil will not get, get extracted to ethanol or water so there you should use low polar solvent like hexane petroleum ether diethyl ether so these extracts these solvents which has very low polarity uh, here in your display you can see uh, solvent number 123123 are uh, almost low polar solvent only these solvents will extract the uh, oil from a seed i mean uh, about i meant about uh, fixed oil so hope you all know the difference of uh, fixed oil and volatile oil so the volatile oil and fixed oil are two different things we generally call them oil but chemically they are 
two different fixed oils are made up of fatty acids but uh, volatile oils are made up of uh, terpenes and their oxygenated products so both are low polar in nature so extraction of them you should need a low polar solvent like hexane petroleum ether benzene diethyl ether etc you can't extract them using water or ethanol so similarly if you want to extract some high polar molecule let me take example of some uh, uh, glycoside which contains sugar and it is heavy and it is high polar you should always use a solvent uh, which is high polar at least ethyl acetate for some uh, moderately polar uh, glycoside or you should use ethanol extract or you may have to use for very highly polar compounds you should use water for as a extractant so you can see the uh, polarity of solvents in this order so hexane petroleum ether diethyl ether ethyl acetate chloroform dichloromethane acetone butanol ethanol methanol water this is the increasing order of polarity of solvents which you can use for extraction so as i said if you use the right extract right solvent then only you'll be ending up with the right right extract so that that ends the uh, extraction method now i'm going for uh, isolation identification i think i have taken more time it's about uh, one hour now uh, this isolation part will not be too long uh, bear with me another 15 minutes uh, or 20 minutes i'll complete the presentation so isolation and identification is a, a technique for separation of molecules from fraction now in extract we have extracted the molecule now i want to isolate them so separation of molecules from fraction and identifying them using physical chromatographic and spectroscopic techniques is called as uh, isolation identification this is the method, this is the uh, this, this is why we use isolation identification method now <clears throat> so Uh, first we have to uh, when before going for uh, starting of uh, your isolation procedure you must start with the extraction so first thing in your isolation first step in your isolation is extraction so what you should do is first take a coarse plant powder never choose a fine powder like a face powder don't make your plant powder in too too much uh, tiny particle make it a coarse powder always use coarse powder then either use a uh, percolator i have shown you how percolation works and otherwise use a succulent apparatus to separate the extract from the plant powder so first use a solvent uh, nxn that is almost very low polar uh, molecule low polar solvent if you get a nxn extract we call it as uh, successive extraction successive extraction means from low polar to middle polar then high polar like that you extract the plant powder you uh, if you use uh, this method of uh, uh, separation of uh, ext uh, extraction method you will get different kind of molecule from these uh, extracts um these plant powders so first you have to use nxn extract then if you steam distill uh, the nxn ex extract obtained you will get volatile matter if you do column chromatography of the nxn extract you will get uh, steroids triterpenoids and other egg glycons egg glycons means uh, not with the sugar molecule just without sugar glycosides without uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, molecules which which has which are not attached to sugar so you will get uh, using uh, from xn extract uh, from uh, column chromatography then you, you go for uh, chloroform extraction same material do chlor chloroform extraction then same material use methanol or alcohol extract from from the chloroform extract if you add 2% acetic acid to chloroform extract basification of aqueous layer uh, layer with the, after adding 2% acetic acid then you basify the aqueous layer with the liquid ammonia then you ex extract it with the dichloromethane you will end up getting alkaloids from chloroform extract this is how you can extract alkaloid and again if you do column chromatography of that on silica gel chloroform extract you will get steroids triterpenoids coumarins flavonoids and other egg glycons so this is how you have to proceed uh, based on what kind of molecule you are looking for if you want to take alkaloid but you directly extract with ethanol you will not get uh, alkaloid so if you are interested in getting these molecule you should choose this particular method then only you will get so that's why i said right method is important right solvent is also important 
then from the methanol extract if you triturate it with water methanol extract you add water and triturate the ethyl acetate extract uh, then add ethyl acetate to that and uh, uh, extract you can use column chromatography you will end up getting polar glycons and glycosides from ethyl acetate diffraction then you separate the n butanol soluble portion from that then by doing column chromatography you will end up getting glycosides polyphenolic compounds so based on what is the nature of compound you are looking for if you are looking for uh, glycoside you should extract with the xa and then chloroform then come to methanol then triturate with the water separate ethyl acetate portion then go for a n butanol extract then only you will get, end up getting the uh, glycosides and polyphenolic compounds so you should be very clear on what method you are using based on the type of uh, method i mean uh, compound of your interest if you doesn't know this is a new plant nobody has extracted then follow all these method in this sequence and identify whatever compound you get free by all these fractions do xn extraction do ethanol i mean uh, chloroform extraction then go for uh, alcohol extraction then separate and find out all, uh, identify all the compounds then you will end up uh, getting new new compounds from that particular plant but if you know uh, what is your compound of interest there is different method that also i will show if you are interested in isolating piperin how you should go if you are not knowing what is the nature and what is the type of chemical you are looking for then you should follow this methodology now as i said i said uh, you, you if you are if you know what you want to isolate then you can do these all well established methods suppose you want to isolate plumbagen plumbagen from extra from a plant material of plumbago species you can use ailanica you can use rosia you can use capensis root part of the plant then you extract with the nxn root powder ex extract with the nxn do a steam distillation simply do steam distillation you will get plumbagen or you can go for column chromatography with the silica gel after packing the column add nxn and benzene in the ratio of 1 is to 1 then you will directly elute plumbagen from it so if you know the correct correct molecule you want to isolate if you are going with that particular extract the you can follow these kind of extraction methods so for many of the compounds this this type of methodology of identification is also available sometimes you are interested to isolate plumbagen and you want to do for some uh, pharmacological action most of the times you rely is you go for uh, some chemical suppliers from market they will charge 5 mg 20000 rupees 10 mg 40000 rupees or 25 mg 50000 rupees but for your study you will need more quantity that time you can't spend lakhs together for extraction i mean for getting those molecules so use these method and separate your compound of interest and use check the purity of the compound and use for your studies then isolation of ambelin from ambelia ripes you know that ambelia ripes uh, is an important medicinal plant used in worm infestations so ambelia ripe fruit powder take fruit powder chloro do chloroform extraction concentrate it you will find crystals of ambelin settling at the bottom of the concent uh, on the in the on the uh, on the dish on the china dish otherwise uh, you do take the mother liquor do column chromatography using nxn and benzene the ratio of 1 is to 1 you will get uh, ambelin so this is a, a simplest method of isolating ambelin from ambelia ripes then if you want to isolate arginolic acid from terminalia arjuna take terminal arjuna wood it take it as a extract concentrate while concentrating itself on the bottom of the china dish you can see that arginolic acid is getting uh, precipitated otherwise take the uh, if not concentrate i mean if not crystallized at the bottom take the mother liquor that is on the top then do a column chromatography on silica gel using ethyl acetate as a solvent then again you will end up getting arginolic acid only thing you have to check the purity you you may it may have some other compounds in it Uh, you have to take a, uh, you have to do a tlc with the reference compound and confirm that your compound is at least 99% pure if you get from market they will give with the purity certificate but if you isolate here you have to check what is the purity of your compound isolated by you then isolation of asiatic oxide you know that uh, central asiatica contains a very uh, memory boosting molecule called asiatic oxide if you want to extract it central asiatic whole plant you have to take then extract with the alcohol wash with the acetone 
then you will get asiatic oxide otherwise the mother liquor if you do column chromatography using chloroform ethanol 4 is to 1 in a column then asiatic oxide will be obtained so i have not explained what is column chromatography i have been saying column chromatography column chromatography where you take a uh, column long tube like burette uh, wider than that in that we pack silica gel and then we add the extract on the top of that then this particular solvent is added at the bottom that particular compost compound is uh, derived out of the driven out of the column that is called as uh, column chromatography most of you may be knowing this is a very important a very easy and simplest method of isolating molecule using column chromatography without much expenses only thing uh, you should have patience and uh, you should have a little bit of skill you should know when your compound is getting eluted and only thing then after you have to take uh, some spectral data and you have to confirm that particular compound then there is a method of isolation of piperin kudunga karpaya ice ha cup illa ninga kudu isolation of piperin if you take piper longum piper nigrum fruits then add alcohol extract then uh, piperin is a alkaloid so it is alkaline in nature so what you have to do is uh, you have to add a 10% NO NOH so that the alkaloid which is present in a plant always will form salt with the plant acids plant will have some acids so these alkaline nature alkaloids will form salt and it will be there as uh, salt in plant material so they are not sol soluble in organic solvents so when you add uh, so add 10% NOH that basifies the mixture and it uh, uh, separates the alkaloid which is alkaline in nature so always in case of extraction of alkaloid uh, you will you will have to use this uh, acidification basification step then only you will get piperin then isolation of garden in from uh, gardenia uh, it is called from gum if you have decamelic gum then digested with the ether ether extract concentrated filtered the precipitate chromatography over silica gel using chloroform you will get garden gardenin gardenin which is a important molecule uh, with the marked pharmacological action uh, this is the last i think isolation of chrysophenol if you have rhea memodi take hexane extract do column chromatography in silica gel using hexane benzene one is to one you will get chrysophenol these are the very easy easy steps wherein uh, you can isolate your compound when you can't afford uh, 50000 1 lakh rupees for pure chemical isolated molecules if these methods you can employ and at least uh, 90% 95% purity material you can get then again for if you spend a little bit on time on uh, purification then you will get pure molecules for your further studies then uh, uh that's all the that's all about uh, how you can uh, isolate uh, uh, known compounds now i will just brief you about the techniques used for identification so uh, we have isolated now we want to identify it right so what techniques we use for uh, identifying a isolated molecule first of first property we look for is the physical property like nature whether it is a crystalline uh, crystal whether it is amorphous whether it is gummy material what kind of material is that then we see what is the color of it then we check melting point so this is the simplest first step in identifying a compound so whenever you got a pure crystal first you note what is its color how is its nature physical nature then check its melting point so you will need enough quantity to do these steps most of the times what happens is when you isolate you will be getting very less quantity of the molecule maybe less than 10 mg then we can't do all these steps after that so you know you need to isolate enough quantity then only all these steps are possible so first you record physical nature of the material color melting point then do chromatography that is usually tlc is uh, used with the identified reference compound so if you know what is the compound use that compound as a reference in your tlc and check the rf value matching of rf values so that you will have idea that whether this whether the compound you isolated is the same or not then after doing a tlc then it uh, we go for ir spectroscopy 
higher spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy is done for to know the functional group present what is the whether it is as a carboxylic group whether it is a methyl group whether it is hydrolic uh, hydroxyl group so what functional group is present in the molecule based on the presence of the functional group in the molecule you will get signals so from the signals you can find out that uh, these this this molecule contains these uh, functional groups then after a year you also need a uv spectroscopy to find out absorption maxima so based on the absorption maxima you will also get an idea about uh, the suspected compound based on the literature so for that compound absorption maxima lambda max is already reported for some compound by comparing uh, your lambda max you can come to an idea whether they are matching or whether they can be a co same compound or not then after uv we go for a mass spectroscopy to calculate the molecular mass so based on the functional group based on the uh, uv lambda max based on the tlc the nature of the color melting point you will have some idea now that this compound may be this now mass will give you exact idea from the uh, molecular mass of the compound that yes this molecular mass and the structure which you are looking for is almost matching now after mass spectroscopy you will have at least around 70 80% conclusion about the compound nature the final concluding uh, 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 spectroscopy is nmr nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy here you will identify nature of carbon using c13 nmr and hydrogen using h1 nmr so you will have uh, c13 nmr as well as h1 nmr data of your molecule you will get different signals from the signals by referring to uh, the uh, the nature uh, the chemical nature already reported you will find whether the compound is matching with the your suspected molecule or not so based on uh, uh, there are other specialized um, nmr technique like dpt hmbc hsq co co ca etc they are all used in case you don't end up getting the current ad correct identity of the plant material i mean uh, molecule then um, along with the, these spectroscopic techniques we also use some chromatography techniques for phytochemical isolation as well as separation so these are also essential part of uh, identification isolation study where paper chromatography is used for uh, some high polar high polar molecules um, mostly for polysaccharides paper chromatography is not that much in common but thin layer chromatography is very important tlc as well as hptlc hptlc is high performance that is Mm, uh, automated uh, form of uh, thin layer chromatography where using your correct identified compound and the compound to be identified can be compared using rf values and you can come to a little conclusion then column chromatography as i said it's a, it's a technique for separation it's a very good technique uh, where you don't need much of expenses only time is needed little bit skill is required you can isolate a molecule using column chromatography then glc is a type of partition chromatography this is generally used for analysis of volatile compounds and hplc is a very uh, highly useful technique in separation of all the kind of molecules from plants again here uh, two phases uh, uh, a liquid as well as a solid uh, it's a liquid liquid separation hplc uh, based on the polarity of the compound you can uh, do a separation of your molecule then some hyphenation is available along with the tlc another technique that is mass spectroscopy is uh, uh, joined so tlc with the mass spectroscopy liquid chromatography with the mass spectroscopy gas chromatography with the mass chromatography mass spectroscopy these techniques helps in exact identification from the mass fragmentation you can tentatively even identify just with the gcms you can identify volatile oil compounds for identification of volatile oil compound gcms is most accepted method where uh, just by giving a mixture of sample you can uh, identify the compounds present in a mixture so gcms is important technique in uh, separation identification of uh, molecules in um, in a mixture of volatile oil compound volatile, volatile nature 
So uh, these chromatographic techniques, you should be aware. A little bit idea of these uh, techniques will help you in uh, identifying uh, molecule. I mean uh, molecules of your interest. Then I'll just give you one example of uh, extraction. I mean identification of one compound using all these techniques which I have said so far. So this method uh, is uh, for uh, extraction of uh, uh, ethyl acetate. The, from ethyl acetate extract of helicanthus elastica, ethyl acetate extract of helicanthus elastica, these compounds have been uh, isolated. So, from, uh, hello. From benzene solution, fraction 1 to 10, fraction 1 to 10. Uh, I couldn't get any compound. Fraction 11 to 25, we obtained a compound called as Fridolin. Fraction 26 to 35, we got a compound called as Epifridolin, common known as Epifridolinol. From fraction 36 to 45, we got a compound called as Betamarin. Then fraction 46 to 55, we got beta cytosterol. Then benzene ethyl acetate elution, this all from benzene evolution. I am referring, I am saying this about column chromatography of ethyl acetate extract of ethyl uh, elicanthus elastica, whole plant extract. Benzene elution, we got uh, epifridolinol, beta amarin, beta cytosterol, and fridolin. These compounds were isolated just from benzene, benzene elution of the extract using a column. Then from by using mixture of benzene and ethyl acetate. Benzene is low polar, ethyl acetate is middle polar. By mixing a little quantity of ethyl acetate, you will increase the polarity of the um, solvent. So slowly by increasing the polarity, you are driving different kind of compounds based on the polarity of the compound present. That is the technique used in column, column chromatography. So fraction with the benzene ethyl acetate, nine, nine portions of benzene, one portion of ethyl acetate, fraction 66 to 91, we, we could identify, isolate a compound called as ethyl gallate. From 4 is to 1, benzene ethyl acetate 4 is to 1, fraction 92 to 120 compound gallic acid was obtained. Then fraction 121 to 132, compound 7, beta cytosterol 3O, beta diglucopyranosoid was isolated. So this is how like here i have uh, around 132 fractions have been uh, separated from the column of ethyl acetate extract of helicanthus elastica and these many compounds seven compounds have been isolated so in the coming slide i'll just give you how gallic acid which is shown in bold here was identified using the techniques which i have mentioned before so gallic acid identification is as below uh, now uh, you have a compound in your hand but uh, you want to know how it is identified so that's why i am saying these steps so elution of the column with the benzene ethyl acetate 4 is to 1 yielded a pale brown solid we got a pale brown solid which was uh, showing single spot on tlc then we came to know that it is a single compound then we took melting point that showed to be 244 degrees celsius in literature, it is mentioned that 250 degrees Celsius is a uh, melting point of gallic acid. So we got around 55 mg of this compound. Gallic acid, 55 mg was obtained. It answered for ferric chloride test for phenol. So as a gallic acid is a phenolic compound, we we suspected it should be maybe uh, phenolic. So we gave, we made a ferric chloride test. Then that gave answer for uh, phenols and then we tested for bicarbonate test so carboxylic acid was also positive so we roughly came to an idea that it can be gallic acid so it it is a phenolic in nature it is also carboxylic uh, it has a carboxylic functional group as well so a single spot at rf 0.37 was obtained on tlc over silica gel with the toluene ethyl acid formic acid 1 0 0.5 0 0.1 ratio as the developing system here you can see in the left side of track this is a tlc of that compound in the left in the left you can see the whole extract corresponding to that that particular uh, fraction as uh, shown a spot a corresponding spot so that means that that compound is present in the extract so you can see the densitometric scan where the where the a peak which is exactly corresponding to the uh, peak, a peak present in the total extract is seen 
so we have confirmed that that gallic acid that is the, that fraction is uh, gallic i mean uh, present in ex extract and here it has eluted as a single compound now we have to identify it with the further details now we took a higher spectrum of the compound using a kbr pellet it showed presence of hydroxyl at 3251 if you get a, a peak that that says it has hydroxyl then it has a alpha alpha beta unsaturated carboxyl group that is indicated by a peak at 1693 per centimeter and a presence of aromatic system by presence of peaks from 863 to 1612 so that this gave a rough idea that this is a carboxylic acid still we don't know what is the exact uh, chemis chemical nature of this compound then we took h1 nmr spectrum of this uh, compound and we got uh, uh, showed a singlet at uh, 7.01 ppm which corresponds to h2 and h6 in the uh, in the molecule in the molecule then after that we did uh, c13 nmr spectrum c13 nmr spectrum revealed uh, carbons at one carbon signal at 121 One not nine, which corresponds to C two and C six. We got a signal at one forty four that corresponds to C three and C five. Then we got a, sim, uh, a signal at one thirty eight that corresponds to C four, and there is a signal at one sixty nine point six nine that corresponds to C O O H group. So the identity was confirmed by comparison of the physical and spectroscopic data reported in literature. We also refer in literature what are the data, these kind of data, these data available in literature for that particular molecule. So Nawar et al. and Kumar Sami et al. 2010, he also reported these uh, uh, values for gallic acid. Identity was further confirmed by comparison with an authentic sample. So if you have authentic uh, gallic acid, do a TLC. If it matches exactly on TLC, then you are you can be hundred percent sure that what you have identified is gallic acid. So this is how identification of the compound is done. so i just wanted to give this is the last portion of portion of my uh, uh, presentation uh, this is on uh, uh, how a nobel prize was obtained for isolation of a molecule from a plant so in 2015 nobel prize for medicine was uh, awarded to dr 2 uu for discovery of anti malarial drug called artemisinin from artemisia annua see the journey how it happened So Tu Yuyu is a Chinese pharmaceutical chemist and educator who discovered artemisinin and uh, dihydroartemisinin used to treat malaria. So there was no cure for malaria at that time. So it was her research which gave way to identification of anti-malarial drug. A significant breakthrough in 20th century tropical medicine saving millions of life in South China, Southeast Asia, Africa and South America. So this is the, uh, that's why this this identification uh, by 2uu is very very important uh, phytochemical discovery made which also won a uh, nobel prize for medicine so uh, let's see how how was the journey in 1969 tu was appointed as uh, head of a secret drug discovery project named project 523 research group at her institute so at china uh, they found that giving this drug to malaria patients it cures but they doesn't know that what is the exact cause how it is happening so they made a secret drug discovery project named 523 research group at our institute 523 stands for they had listed 523 uh, formulation and drugs which uh, which which uh, has anti malarial property in 1971 her team had screened over 2000 traditional chinese recipes and made 380 herbal extracts from some 200 herbs which were tested on mice so they they uh, listed total uh, all the formulations and medicines used for intermittent fevers and they they came narrowing down their uh, scope on of their research so one compound was effective uh, sweet wormwood that is artemisia annua which was used for intermittent fevers a hallmark of malaria so in malaria you can see intermittent fever so they came out with their plant finally they decided they got one molecule one plant which is promising in, which was promising in curing malaria so to you you discovered that low temperature extraction process could be used to isolate an effective anti malaria substance from the plant 
so here you see how important is uh, extraction method is so if you if she had used some wrong method of uh, extraction she would not have ended up with the uh, discovery of this drug so they used the low temperature extraction and they confirmed that low temperature extraction only gives that particular molecule which is highly anti malarial in nature then to realize hot water had already damaged active ingredient in the plant therefore she proposed a method using low temperature ether to extract the effective compound so if you extract this plant material using hot water that is by boiling uh, this plant powder in water you will not get uh, artemisinin so that will not be effective as anti malarial drug so low temperature ether extraction was only successful gave uh, promising result for her the animal tests showed it was completely effective in mice and monkeys so they found that this extract low temperature ether extract of the plant is highly effective in curing malaria in 1972 she and her colleagues obtained the pure substance and named it as artemisinin which has saved millions of lives so from that low temperature ether extract they could isolate a molecule which is highly anti malarial nature that was named as artemisinin so two also studied the chemical structure and pharmacology of artemisinin in 1973 two wanted to confirm the carbonyl group in the uh, artemisinin molecule therefore she accidentally synthesized dihydroartemisinin so once it, it is a practice once you isolate it immediately other uh, chemical uh, scientists will start uh, synthesizing it so the synthesis part was also looked after by her they synthesized a simile of that compound that is dihydroartemisinin to volunteer to be the first human subject she herself volunteered to be the first subject for clinical trial of the medicine as head of this research group i had the responsibility she said so it was safe so the con uh, she conducted successful clinical trial with the human patients in 1977 her work was published anonymously in 1981 she represented the finding relating to artemisinin at a meeting with the world health organization for her work on malaria she was awarded nobel prize in medicine on 5th october 2015 so it takes how many years uh, for identification of a molecule and uh, uh, recognition of that particular molecule you you can just imagine so at very old uh, at uh, 2015 at very old age of her she got a nobel prize for this discovery because it saved millions of people in china from malaria and this whole discovery was based on a traditional knowledge which was prevailing in china so let us hope for discovery of such wonder cures from plants to naturally alleviate uh, all these diseases which comes to man on earth so i am thanking uh, you all for this opportunity thank you for patient listening 